Here we're going to take a look at the LFOs of Diva. It has two LFOs, and they're located here. This is LFO 1, and this is LFO 2. So to start with, what is an LFO? Well, it stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So essentially, it's just one of these. The difference is, of course, that the LFO is not heard. It's just used as a modulation source. And for that reason, it has a very different set of controls. So let's just get to grips with what they do. Let's assign LFO 1 to this tune mod here. Now for now we don't hear anything, and that's because our depth mod control is at 100%. I'll come back to this control in a little while, but for now I'm just going to set it to zero. And now we can hear the effect. So we can see we have a waveform selection tool here. And these are all the same kind of waveforms we were looking at earlier. And you can hear their shapes. Some new waveforms though are random hold. And random glide. Now these are modeling what would be randomly generated voltages. So the randomly generated voltage in the case of the hold is going to be random steps. In the case of glide, it's going to be more smooth. There's going to be a lot of slew between one point to the next point. So let's just take a listen to that quickly again. So you hear random generated amounts, but they're very smooth. They glide around. Whereas this is steppy. Okay. So the next most used control here is going to be the rate. Now the rate control is going to be dependent on our timing method as well. So this will be the fastest possible LFO setting. And this is right in the audio right now. And then when we want to go slower, we've got 10 seconds here. Now note, this 10 seconds is going to be true while we're at this default setting of zero. But as we bring it down here, we're actually multiplying the time out. And in this direction, we'll be essentially dividing it down, making it faster. Now, when we come to the synchronized controls, we are using multiplication and division based on the original tempo measurement we selected. So in this way, we can get synchronized LFOs to our track. The next thing we want to look at is the delay. If I bring the delay up halfway, let's make this fast. And let's bring the delay up again. You'll notice it takes a while for the effect of the LFO to be heard. So the delay is creating a fade into the LFO signal. Okay, so now that we've looked at delay, I'm actually going to go down straight to this restart control here. We've got a few options. Sync, gate, single, and random. Now what this determines is the behavior of the LFO relative to us playing a note or pushing a key down. And so it has a lot to do with how the LFO restarts or doesn't restart depending on when we play a note. At the moment, in this setting, it's going to restart every time it receives a gate signal, which as we looked at in the last video just means pushing a key down and sending the trigger to open the gate. See I'm getting an identical sound every time I hit the key? Because the LFO is starting from the same position. Now using this restart method we can actually determine where in the waveform we want to start. So using the phase control, we can actually determine where the waveform starts when we hit a key and trigger the LFO. Choosing sync mode will synchronize your LFOs to your track in your DAW, so that as you start the track, the LFOs start, and it makes them totally predictable so that wherever you are in your project, the LFO knows where it should be too. The next is single, and then we have random. To demonstrate this, let me just play a chord. Now I'm going to remove this modulation, and let's set the LFO to control the cutoff frequency instead. So I'm now holding three notes down, but we're hearing a single smooth modulation of the cutoff. And let's look what happens when I change this to gate. And let me stagger the notes a little bit. We 
we now have the LFOs themselves being staggered as well because the LFO here is going to be set with each note. If I change this to single again and stagger the notes again, I don't get that behavior. What I get is a single LFO behavior on the cutoff. So this essentially synchronizes all the LFOs of all the different voices to act as one, where setting it to gate allows each LFO to operate on its own basis depending on when you hit a key. Now the difference with random from gate is the phase is randomized. So now we don't have any control over where the waveform starts. We just put our keys down and the randomization will take care of the rest. Okay, so moving on, we have rate modulation here. Now I can use LFO2 to modulate the rate of LFO1. Now you can hear the LFO is changing speed. And I can assign other things to control this too, such as key follow. In the case of key follow, lower notes will give me a slower rate. And so it's another way to get the synth to behave slightly differently up and down the keyboard range. So that's modulating the rate of the LFO. The last thing here is the depth mod. Depth modulation allows us to control whether the LFO is active or not. So in the case of depth mod set to 100, it is not active until it gets a signal from whatever is selected in this box. Let's choose envelope. Let's try that again. See, I'm now controlling the LFO much in the same way the delay control was fading it in. If I choose mod wheel, it'll basically only activate the LFO as I raise the mod wheel. And this is really useful for vibrato. In fact, vibrato is hardwired in this synth to LFO1, which is why it says vibrato here. And you can introduce the vibrato with this control. But rather than vibrato being always active, you would typically assign it to the mod wheel. So then, the last thing to look at is polarity, and this is fairly straightforward. Let's modulate the pitch here again. Now the polarity essentially dictates whether you're going to get negative signals and positive signals, or just positive signals. In this case, we're modulating the pitch up, we're going from this zero position all the way to its maximum. But we're not actually going into the negative. If I change this to bipolar, which means two poles, then goes from its positive, all the way into the negative as well. So it goes from here, through the middle, to negative, and back up again. And this is the motion. So that's been a look at the LFOs in D.Va. Very simple parts of D.Va, but very powerful. And we're going to continue to look at some more uses for LFOs as we continue throughout the video series.